is Dwight Wegman, author, engineer, business owner, um, handsome man extraordinaire. Thank you for joining us, Dwight. Uh, you will you're see. Always good exaggeration. I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, as you can see here is a copy of his book, Work Well, which um, Jimmy read cover to cover every word three times and he's going to recite for us later on in the show but uh check it out it's, we're going to talk about it a lot on the show but it's an amazing book i i've read it think about what you did <laughs> nobody makes it to the end of these things come on <laughs> the broken agenda podcast sponsored by laughing rock technology <laughs> reading of it so every night to my daughter the whole thing um <laughs> no i think you're absolutely right though jimmy there's definitely some personality types i i think i think even more than the power trip personality type is the lack of self-confidence i think a lot of managers especially middle managers because they're feeling pressure from all sides mm -hmm. from beneath to manage effectively and to defend and to stand up for their employees from above to maximize profits and show bottom line numbers and from other sides other managers encroaching onto their territory i and i feel like you get this this erosion of confidence and instead of trying to do your best you try to protect what you have and as soon as you stop growing and you start protecting you're done you're already done you might not know it for 20 years but your career is over. Like you're, you're never going to be successful again for the rest of your life as soon as you close ranks and just try to hoard. That's, that's it. It's game over. I've seen it happen a, a, a thousand times. Uh, most people don't realize they're doing it. And you can't tell them. It's, it's not a thing you can share with them. I mean, you can try to lead through example, but I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. That's usually you've been beat up quite a few times and you build up that wall and you get that skin and that's it. Now, from a CEO standpoint, I, I think it's less protectionist and more just ego well like the but, personality types probably come a lot into play you know like alpha s sigma beta see i don't know that i know the disc styles i don't know yeah the so yeah. like 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 a very like i don't know all of them but like a like an alpha male is like a like an alpha male would sell out right just to like, well, that's one of the characteristics in the world of, you know, how they're identified. If you, if you watch like, or if you read up on their characteristics, like a Sigma male kind of just carves their own path, but alphas and Sigmas are very, are very similar, but the Sigma doesn't have to have the recognition. The alpha male always wants dominant position. Beta males are like kind of followers. Which type um, of male regularly has to beg his wife for sex? <laughs> is that, I don't know, where, no, Omega think, male, is that what I am? Beta, beta. <laughs> Whatever I think, that is. I think that's the beta. <laughs> I don't cover that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> There's not a lot of us. We're sad, we're sad that, sex. I, that means you're not an alpha or a sigma, I guess. <laughs> I think we all I do think that, so. Jimmy. <laughs> Come on. That's, that wasn't a tricky one. Um, no, interesting. I've heard people talk about that, but you only ever hear about alpha and beta. I didn't realize there was even other types. Yeah, there's like yeah. five. Oh, okay. Um, I can't say I, I can't say them all offhand, but I there is a, ha a handful of them. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's there's multiple and females. I mean, it's uh, yeah. classification systems or modes. You know, like I use the disc, but there's variations on that. You know, mm -hmm. so. In the disc, there's the dominant guy who would be like your alpha. Uh, there's the person of influence who um, they're kind of like a person motivated by social, motivated by social recognition, group activities, relationships. There's the steady person, you know, they're just like even keel. They just, they just put out, you know, they, they, they don't, not very emotional, you know, they just kind of plug away. I like those guys. And then there's the conscientious person who um, they like to to be they're, they're kind of like the perfectionists, you know, like they, they whatever they do, they they really want to do well, you know, but they're kind of like specialists in what they do. Okay. Now, and that's just kind of one way of um, classifying people. There's other ways, whether it's variations, you know, but but I would say like when you come into a work environment, those people or personality types are motivated by different things. 
you know, and, and sometimes companies are like, well, if I want to motivate my employees, I got to do this, you know, and that might work for one personality type, but it doesn't really resonate with the other personality types. Whereas like with, so with you as a manager, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand how your people are wired and you gotta meet them, you know, and that doesn't mean that you, you treat them differently. It's not that they're, um, valued differently. It's just that the way you reach them is different, you know, and you have, to, if the better you understand your employees, the more you can connect with them and get them to go where you want to go, where the company needs to go. But if you're, if you don't pay attention to that, well then, you know, you get what you get. Well, I find the, the other thing that's always interesting is, is when you hire, and this might change a bit I don't think it does at scale, but uh, when you hire, you need to balance those personality types out. If you have an entire office full of full of D's, D's yeah. you're in a you're in a you're in a lot of trouble. That is going to be a nightmare scenario for everybody. And I always it always cracks me up that whenever I do disc assessments, and I used to do them. I used to teach a, a do for volunteer at colleges to give entrepreneurship classes, and we do some limited disc assessments. Everybody wanted to be a D. And I was like, I, I don't think you know what that means. That's not necessarily a good thing. We need them. They definitely drive stuff. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, you know, a lot of important stuff that a D will bring to the table, but that is not necessarily a compliment. <laughs> they can be destructive. They can be, you know, they can be very combative. They can be very aggressive. Um, right. And, so, and if you are a D, you need to understand what the weaknesses are of that character, uh, that personality type because um, you might resonate on some levels, but alienate on others. Mm -hmm. And does that really take you where to, to where you wanna go? You know, and, and yeah, and like you said, you know, I think some, a pitfall for many people is like you said, people think, well, I have to be a D. I have to be the alpha man, you know, I have to be the leader, you know, in order to be successful. And when you try to be something that you aren't, you're just constantly frustrated, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so the sooner you can get comfortable with who you are and how you're wired, it's not better or worse, it's just different. Absolutely. And, 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 but you know, when you can put the different personality types together in an organization, I think, like you said, you get a mesh of all those, you, your organization, organization will outperform one that's just a bunch of these and i feel like you can are you giggling have yeah, you uh, i don't know are you giggling because he have said you, a bunch of have these? you guys all <laughs> like Tyler, can would you pull, prefer he said a bag of these the site with the personality types <laughs> yeah. Or? yeah oh yeah let's, um, let's pull it up on the screen do you, do you uh like have you guys all taken the disc test yeah yeah i have multiple times yeah yeah and you know did it come out the same no no it's come out different sometimes depending on my mood that yeah. day it comes out different that's what <laughs> that's what i think is interesting is that um like i did take it a couple times and i've kind of floated so i think it has a lot to do with your mood that day it does but, but usually um, almost universally my secondary trait is s like almost every time I take it, S shows up on there, but my primary will float sometimes. You know, I think that comes down to, you know, what'd you have for breakfast? Did you have that extra cup of coffee? Hey, did you did you fight with your kids last night? Like, you know, a lot of different things put you, you know, in a different headspace and you're gonna answer questions differently. And it's, you know, it's I, people put way too much stock in these things. There are great ways to get general information, but they don't mean what people want them to mean. People want them to be like a magic pill that in, tells them yeah. all about oh, themselves. Oh, this is, this is me. Yeah, and, and we see that in society now too. People oh, do okay. that now. I'm a liberal or I'm a conservative. You're not, you're not one thing. Stop being this, one thing, you're you. Yeah. And you've got elements of lots of things to you. There's, there's a million experiences that all came together to make you. And I, these types of tests infuriate me in some way because of that, because I feel like it allows people to hide in a category. Um, so I, I always feel like you should use them cautiously but they still have value it's a tool it's a tool exactly but, it, but it's not an end yeah i'm not going to cut a piece of wood with a hammer even though it's a tool it's yeah, yeah they, right. they, used properly it's effective <laughs> right right and you know if if you've never taken a disc test well it's probably good for your self-awareness you know like how do i come off to people 
you know, and uh, what are the things that make me a little weak? But what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And it's not necessarily weaknesses. It's just like, okay, if this is something I struggle with, well, maybe I need to just make sure I, 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 uh, I represent, represent myself a little better in, in that way, you know, so that, you know, I can be a well-rounded individual. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Um, I, I saw one that was done that was interesting. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but they were doing disc assessments for other people on their team. Mm -hmm. And they weren't announcing who did the assessment, but they were saying, you know, another member of your team did an assessment for you, and this is what they came up with. And people got mad. They got, there was yelling happening. It was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> I'm being like, judged. Can, can I were, say, how spots? dare you say I'm an influencer? You know, yeah. It was like, it was like, relax. I chill. put myself Jeez. in a box, not you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like, whoa. It was like, all right, we're going to start throwing uh, 50 cuffs. It's going to get weird. <laughs> and those um, are the blind spots. Those are the about. blind spots. You know, you're like, absolutely right. You think you're one thing, but the people around you, they see those other parts. Mm -hmm. And when i looked at this stuff ray if, like my you know and then i stumbled onto the whole alpha beta all that stuff i don't you know if you can find a alpha? site that'll yeah. i i don't know what it's called because i looked in six personality types it doesn't really bring that up but um so i started really like researching this stuff and i mean i think i float between sigma alpha this one doesn't I'm definitely there not. Sigma. There's there's things about alpha that I'm definitely not, and then there are things about sigma that I'm not. I'm not a very reserved person, so I don't tend to fall down into the beta category. But there's also some things in there that kind of hit home with me too. So it's kind of similar to the disc test, where you know maybe one day you're getting this, and next you know depending on your mood or whatnot. But I think it's really interesting to look at these uh, gamma, omega. Yeah, so these are, it's interesting to, to read about this type of, you know, I don't know what you call it, dominance type stance. This has something to do with how, you, like, your, your stance as an individual. Um, they feel like they're really selling alpha on this one. <laughs> Holy mackerel. It's like all the traits you want when you play, like, an, like an RPG game. <laughs> yeah. like a, it's like, I got to get my charisma up. I got to be alpha. Well, and the thing is, people think I'm one or the other, and yeah. you're a blend. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You're a blend, and then, you, and it's not right or wrong. It's just like, see, here's a gamma you know. adventurous. I mean, I'm ex I'm pretty extremely adventurous. You are pretty extremely adventurous. Um, but then there's a lot. What well, am I eager? You know, if you go down through aware this i'm not always very definitely aware. not I'm empathetic definitely not zero empathy <laughs> zero it's actually embarrassing that yeah, we started right. the episode That's with zero I, mean. like, I know yeah, yeah i have no empathy for nothing it makes the rest of the race except for bad. me i'm empathetic <laughs> to myself <laughs> i find it funny what i've noticed through years of managing people is people will exert different whole sets of traits based on the environment so we've got a guy at our work right now who is extremely passive very bad. And the guy we didn't really like to talk that much. But when there's an emergency, he turns into a lion. The guy is amazing under pressure. But when there's no pressure, he just kind of rolls back. And he's like, ah, eh, no pressure. I'm just going to hang out here and do my work, and I'm good. As soon as the stuff hits the fan, he comes popping out of nowhere, and he just starts taking charge. I mean, but his role completely changes based on the amount of pressure you assert. And I think we're all kind of like that in some way. I don't know. Maybe not in that direction. But I think the environment shapes who we are at that moment. As, as much as anything else. I mean, I've seen a lot of people do that fold under pressure. They're great yeah, leaders until the pressure comes and then all of a sudden they're missing. So. Yeah. And I think some, I think the trap a lot of people fall into is that they think, well, I need to be this when that's not who they are. And, and then when the tough or when the challenge or the, the, the panic, the crisis comes, then they just don't have the energy to be what they thought they ought to be. They then they revert back into their whatever's natural. So they spent themselves pretending. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that. Well, it's yeah. exhausting to pretend. Yeah. It, it really yeah. is. Because like, you have to think about it. You do. It's much yeah. easier. To, it's the same yeah. with lying. It's exhausting to lie. Yeah. Just don't lie. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a horrible policy. <laughs> just it's don't like, lie and do you. It's just, so easy. Exactly. <laughs> like, people don't so, like it. Oh well. You're gonna have moments of embarrassment, but hey, you know what? Roll with it. It's gonna be a heck of a lot yeah. better than getting caught in a lie. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I said that. Oh man. Yeah. 
No, I learned a long time ago. It's, it's, my wife would say I'm, I'm painfully honest. <laughs> but, I, but I was like, look, it just, I lied a lot when I was a kid. And I was like, it is the most stressful experience ever to be juggling like 10 lies. And to be like, like at first you're proud of yourself. You're like, yeah, I'm getting away with this. And then you're like, I just, I just want it to stop. I, <laughs> like, I just can't remember. Like, I just can't keep it all my straight. Brain, it's a lot of lies. My stripping out my ears. <laughs> it was like a teenager. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not lying anymore. If you don't like it, just arrest me. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it. It's fine. <laughs> and life got a lot easier. Do we want to skim through this since we brought it yeah, up? Yeah, let's as, bring it up. As actual like. Oops, so six, so here, yeah. It's all right, so let's see. What's the alpha male got going on? He's confident. He's, That's a good thing. Yeah. He's outgoing. Okay, fair enough. So far, it's Tyler. He's a leader. Yep. Charismatic. All right, Tyler's an alpha. Yeah, no. Beta. Friendly. Not Jimmy. <laughs> He's <laughs> a jerk. He's <laughs> a reserve. All right, not Jimmy. <laughs> Never mind. It's definitely not a beta. Submissive. Okay, nope. you, you can rate me. I don't think there's Why don't any... you guys decide what you think I am? I, I don't think there's anybody in here that's a... There's that's nothing a, to describe. That's anybody. a beta. They're definitely loyal. 100%, you're a beta four. <laughs> Without a doubt. Is that so a thing? it's a sub-trait. <laughs> it's a sub-trait. He's yeah. a beta four. So, and you might be a submissive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know you that well. <laughs> Gamma. All right, so here's one I never heard of. So he's adventurous. Definitely. That, that's a Jimmy. Eager. What does eager mean? A gamma is likely to be a person who's eager to get many things in life. Get many things in life. I don't think that's you. Wait, wait. Side of experience, enjoying the world as well. Oh, enjoying the world like, as well. Yeah, you know what? Are, we ra- are you rating Tyler experiences? or me? No, that would be you. Yeah, you're pretty eager, Jimmy. You, you, you suck a lot of experiences out of life, and, and not that came out weird. I, I respect that. <laughs> I, I heard it after I said it, but I meant that in a positive way. I'm starting to resent these accusations. I, I'm starting. I'm going to shut my face. Now. This is getting embarrassing for both of us. <laughs> He's aware. I don't know. So far, Jimmy, you've got pretty much all these traits. Um, Am I aware? I have Sometimes no idea. Sometimes I'm not aware. Maybe not. I don't know. Look, I'm not three and four <laughs> for okay. the most part. Self-assured. The Omega Man. That sounds like a movie title. Self-assured. Now, are there female versions of this? They all say the Omega well, Man. Well, yeah, this can be, male, this can be a male. So, female or male. So it's, this, it's, yeah, it's just, non-binary? No. Nope. <laughs> it's like yes. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so the, as a matter Omega, of fact, this, this website is racist. Would this be the Omega Them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, got it. Perfect. They. They. The Omega They. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Self-assured, driven, intelligent. I don't know. It's sounding a lot like Alpha. Well, it's diversified interests. Okay. Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know. They're all starting to sound the same to me. Anybody else? <laughs> like, I'm not. Yeah. I think the difference. Like. It's oh, hard to get them on this cusp. Like you have to almost dig a little deeper. I need like a like a Venn diagram or something like yeah. to kind of map this thing out. This is a very generic. Yeah, this isn't this four isn't doing points it for me. on each one. He is resigned. Oh, what does resign mean? Okay, it's usually someone who's gone through an experience that has caused him to change into a delta male. Oh yes, I remember the delta. The delta so is, is kind of like a traumatic experience. Got dumped by a, somebody. Or so when you when you break up, scarred. Had, yeah, and you got scarred, and the... then you and then you change your personality. You got to get back on that horse. You can't go all Delta on us. Don't you sometimes feel like you're a Delta? Everybody's a Delta at one point. In no, life. no, no, nope. Never. never. You just, you put your head down and you roll forward. <laughs> it's, it's, you just take that divorce and you just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> That's all right. It just happens. And then you just, you push it, you do what every man does. Push you, it down. You push it down real hard until it turns into cancer. Mm-hmm. That's that's how cancer is formed. You just keep pushing it. Push it down until it it's time to use the latrine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Resentful. Okay, no, I don't really, no, not in this group. Self-sabotaging, also no. Maybe Jimmy. Uh, lonely. Wow, that, you know what? The Delta sounds really depressed. Yeah. Yes, that sounds... Brutal. There's a sigma. How many? There are five. Is that the last one? Or is there I think six? there's six. I feel sometimes like I relate cunning. more to the sigma than anything. So you think you're cunning? cunning. Well, I can be cunning. This particular. I just, I do, I'm not cunning. I can be very cunning, but I, I don't do it in a bad way anymore. I but wish I, I was, was cu- cunning just so I could use I'm the a very word cunning more often. <laughs> yeah. It's a great word. I like cunning. <laughs> yeah. just, I want to con all the time. Maybe it's like, just that I want to be cunning. I, <laughs> I don't even know where this conversation is going. All right. We got self-confidence, cunning, likable. Does this sound like beta? It sounds a lot like baiting. Calculated. I, yeah, I, don't I don't know. I think they're all the same. I'm not always calculated, though. 
There, there, four points is not enough. These get into about 12 to 15 points on each one. Wait. And when you see them broken down better, you can start to really, like, there are differences. So you're blaming Tyler for finding a terrible website. Well, well what, that's, if you That's found, very cunning of you. <laughs> like, if you actually found, like, a, if you, like, did, like, a versus maybe or just a sigma, it would probably, like, go a little deeper into it. But see, I, I, think I don't we know have, how, how much we need to really, like, Dwight's sitting right on it. Out. I thought we were talking about the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean, you know? So we could be stuck here for for the rest of the show. If we're not careful. It's not called The Broken Agenda for no reason. This is what happens. Which uh, one? Welcome I, to the I, show, I like Dwight. Which, whichever one has ADD on it is the one that all of us three are. It's just one. Except Tyler. He just tolerates the two of us. He's very tolerant. Um, this one says uh, the beta is the perfect husband. Oh, so no, I'm not a beta then. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a perfect that's wife. That's the only reason I'm still married. <laughs> She's very tolerant. <laughs> yeah, say, like, perfect. I, I don't know that there are any beta males. If you're oh. like, you know, it's just like, I'm not there. I don't know. Well, I, a beta is more reserved and doesn't, like, um, won't necessarily reject or, or, like, put up. You know, won't resist the order. Wait, is that what makes a perfect husband? <laughs> to, to lie on your belly <laughs> and wait patiently to be ordered around? Yeah. Well, then you know what? Maybe it's good we're not perfect husbands. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure my wife would leave me if I was submissive like that. She'd be like, I, not, get out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... it's She's kind definitely of, cunning, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She oh yeah, be, she could be a sigma female. She maybe she is. Maybe she's you, all you sigma all be, over. Yeah, then what? What? You no, because it says manip- so she is definitely not manipulative. That is not her personality at all. She's a very honest person. Sigma's manipulative. She's very honest. Yeah, like that's. She's just smarter than you. She well, look. Let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly everybody I know is smarter than me. <laughs> I mean, well, the only ones that not, aren't are my brothers. Like you could have a trait, but not flawed, use it. Just like me. You know what I mean? You could have a trait, but not necessarily use it. Like, could you be manipulative? Like, are you? Do you well, have the I mean, skill set I, I or like the to think to do these it? are inherent traits. Yeah. Like, there are people I have met who default to manipulation. They may not even be consciously aware they're doing it. Um, and I'm not going to name them because if they watch this, they'll hate me. But it's just it's the way their mind thinks like mm-hmm. they naturally manipulate people it's they like naturally manipulate situations yeah and there, there's also and i think if it's a true trait of yours and you see this all the time with athletes that a lot of times the best athletes are the worst coaches and it's not because they don't have the talent to coach it's because they're so naturally good at what they do they don't really know how to tell someone else how to do it you Can't know think if, about the details yeah kind of like michael jordan yes yeah. How do you teach how to shoot the perfect jump shot when you've been able to do it since you were four? Like you never had to think about it. You just knew. Um, and I think a lot of people, like if you think about it, we might all have elements of every single one of these categories or be capable of doing the things in every one of these ca- categories. But there are things here that each of us does inherently without thought. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that, that truly define, you know, what your innate personality is. You know, you, you were talking about somebody, you know, encountering somebody who they immediately go to manipulation. And, you know, what I hear there is that they're looking, they're approaching your, the negotiation or whatever you're dis- discussing from a win-lose perspective. Like, they want what they, yeah. they, they, they want to win, you know, and if that means you lose, that's okay. Hmm. But if you want to get the best performance, you know, out of your organization, I say you got to look for win-win outcomes. Or lose-lose. Because I will will say there are times when a good compromise means everyone loses. And that's fine. We all lost together. Let's move on. It's the only thing that creates real strife, in my opinion, is when somebody clearly wins. That's (laughs) that's when people get nutty. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, like, but if you're, in a business negotiation and you're selling a product you know well of course you want to win but your customer needs to win too absolutely you know and if they lose will they be your customer that long i I don't know you know and and um that goes with your internal customers too you know it's not just your external customers but your 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 internal the people that you work with like if you approach your interactions with them from a win-lose perspective instead of a win-win, are you really going to get the best out? Are, are you going to get the best pr- 
product or the outcome or the performance that you're looking for. I say no if it's win-lose. I agree. If it's win-win, well, and, and then you got a chance. Tyler and I had this conversation about, was about two years ago, and uh, our industry is defined, we're managed services, our industry is defined by selling you a contract and then charging you a ridiculous amount of money to implement that contract. Mm -hmm. And the two of us are sitting down and we're just, just chatting. And I'm like, you know, this feels wrong to me. And he goes, what do you mean? And we're going back and forth. And I said, we sold you something on a contract term for typically three years is the normal mm -hmm. term, which means you're going to commit three years guaranteed of your life working with our company. And we're going to charge you for the right to do it. And I was like, <clears throat> and this is what you're saying. And I was like, isn't the easiest way to make this a win-win to say, I know everybody else would charge you $20,000 to implement this. You sign a three-year term, we do it for free. You're like, we're making a commitment to you because you're making a commitment to us. It's win-win. You get it for free, no imputation. And he was like, yeah, he goes, I think most people would absolutely resonate with them on that. And I think it's one of the most popular decisions we ever made. Yeah. Customers are expecting that dreaded, how much is this going to cost to make a switch or how much is this going to cost to implement? We're like, nothing. It's my favorite question to get. Yeah, sign it for three years and we know that you're making a commitment, so we will too. We'll do it on our dime. And that way you know we're invested. And everybody's everybody's in on the ground floor. We're getting we're coming in equal footing. I'm, I'm and, confused. I'm like, what do you mean? Can you elaborate? Like So let's say you want to switch say you have fifty employees mm -hmm. and you want to switch over to Laughing Rock for your managed services. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take over all your licensing, we're gonna take over all your IT support, we're gonna take over all your management, everything. Security, cybersecurity, all of it. Um, you would sign off on the contract, let's say it would be three thousand dollars a month for a contract to cover all the licensing support and everything else. On top of that, there would be a $15,000 implementation fee to install all the software on all the computers, to remove all the previous company's software, to implement the cybersecurity solutions, to deploy the hardware that's included in the contract, all of that. There would be an initial fee for the labor to do all that work. And what we said is, that's not right. Like you're signing a three year contract. You're saying we promise you three years worth of business and we're gonna be a partner with you for three years and we're saying great, give us money. Give us more money. We're immediately tipping the scales in our favor saying give us more. And you're just saying start paying me monthly and we're gonna implement. We don't even charge just... monthly until the implementation happens. Okay. We yeah. do the implementation for free. Once we're done, we start the contract. Um, so that we are also making a commitment. That's so now we're invested. I mean, we're front loading the investments. We're taking on the bulk of the responsibility on this thing. So, so you do something like that. You're like rolling that cost into this contract. No, we really mm -hmm. just eat the cost Yeah, because we're still competitive with our competition. We just think it's a money making machine. We think it's a way for MSPs to generate more revenue out of a contract. It's kind of like shipping and handling. Shipping and handling is a cost of doing business, right? But you still, they still charge you even though they have to get you the product, right? Instead of handing that cost off, we just eat it and say thanks for buying. We just eat it and because, well, go ahead. Does that customer become your best advertiser? We don't lose any customers. I'm just saying, and then they tell things. They do. Mm -hmm. it's, You'd be amazed what this guy did for me. What's our customer retention rate? 99? 99, yeah. 99% customer. What's our employee retention rate? 100%. We've lost two employees in 10 years. Yeah. And both one of them became a well, customer. Wait, how many have you had? Uh, we've got dozens and dozens, oh. but one of them became a customer because mm -hmm. he went to a company and then immediately hired us to come in and take care of their stuff. And the other one wants to come back and work for us. We got to really put an actual percentage. So maybe that is a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, say, I prefer <laughs> when they leave and become a customer <laughs> instead of writing a check, I get a check. It's a, it's a, it's a much better relationship. No, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think stuff like that is not, I don't think it's that hard. Is what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think any of this is that hard. You know, you're right. It's not that hard. It's, it's what I call a lot of common sense, but it's been lost by a lot of people. It really They're has. Blinded by profit overall, or you know, I, I'm I'm not sure what what drives some of the toxic culture that you see, but um, it's not that hard. It's 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 pretty simple. I have a you thought. Think about I agree. Do you like? Do you think that, like, some people don't know how to make friends? Like, and do you think it, that you, not so much a friend, but like, um, like, you have the if you have like being able to meet somebody and strike up conversation and develop rapport, is a skill set. 
right? And so some people, not everybody has that skill set. And so if you don't have that skill set and you get you end up in a leadership position, I would think a toxic environment is a default scenario. Could be. Right? You have to understand how to build relationships. Well, you know, maybe that person is also single in many cases. I don't know. I'd be curious well, to know what this statistic really is. Well, I, I don't know. He's stats. just making up stats. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, know. Probably gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know now. Well, like what kind of. Well, I would say is like as a leader in, in, in your company. <laughs> Sorry. Just, you really went off the rails there. He did. Yeah, see that? That was a seriously for a broken agenda. <laughs> well, I at least tried to keep it on track. You know, it's like if you as a leader in your organization, you get the opportunity to set the culture, whatever you want that to be. Now, if you don't make an effort to set the culture, the culture at large is what you get. You know, because you're not you're not bringing any any correction to that. You're not saying this is who we are. These are the values we operate by. So if so, the people coming in to work for you, they're just bringing whatever they had. And sometimes it isn't good. And then worlds collide and things don't go well in your culture. But that's why I say, like, as, as a leader in business, you know, you get the opportunity to actually set the culture, set the tone of the co companies. Like, this is who we are. These are the values we operate by. I will treat you with respect and, and with, as, uh, what, you will, what I expect from you is personal responsibility to deliver your best product, you know, and your best effort. And then we can work together to get great outcomes. So um, that's why I say, like, if you don't, as a leader, don't set the culture or the, 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 the tone for the culture, you're going to get whatever you get at, at the culture at large. And there's some pretty ugly stuff out there we see. Well, it's funny you say, I had a business mentor, Pat Flanagan. I'll say his name because I have nothing but good things to say about the man. Uh, he actually said to me one time, he goes, when I, when I told him I was starting my own company, he's, he was a big culture guy. Mm -hmm. And he said, just remember, if you're not fostering the culture you want, someone else is. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll never forget that because I was like, who? And he goes, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And he's like, so don't ever forget culture. He's like, culture above all else. He goes, everything else is easier to fix than culture. Culture takes forever. I would also think that you could say culture is a reflection of, you know, whoever's in charge. Yeah, if that was true, my whole team would be drunk 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> All right, we are out of time. Does, uh, any final thoughts, guys, or any final questions for Dwight? No. Dwight, do you have any final thoughts? I'll look for forward us? to reading the book, Dwight. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I would just say I wrote the book so it's something you could read in a couple hours. You know, people who are in business, they don't have – a lot of disposable time, you know, read a 400 page book. So it was designed to read in a couple hours so that you can get in, get out. I mean, I didn't really want to beat around the bush, but, and it, it gives you a way to move. Well, first of all, it, it helps you define a toxic environment. And then how do you move out of that? Whether you're um, the leader of the, of the organization or if you're just someone who's living in a toxic environment in, at your work, well, how do you navigate that personally so that you're not a victim, but you can take control of your circumstances and, and feel a bit empowered that, you know, you don't have to be a, a victim of whatever the toxic culture is. So while it's meant for leaders, the principles apply to anybody in any place in the organization. Absolutely. Dwight, thank you so much. Right. The book is yes, Work Well. The name is Dwight Wegman, and it's available on Amazon. It's on, it's on Kindle. Yes. Get it now, Dwight. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Craig. Absolutely. Appreciate thank your thanks time. For thank you. As you always, guys, Jimmy. Jimmy, Tyler, I'm Craig. Yes. Yep. Have a great day, everybody. All right. See See you. Thanks for joining us. The Broken Agenda Podcast. Sponsored by Laughing Rock Technology. Ha, 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 ha.